Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV. We're going to take you through a new RV orientation on this 2016 Outback 318FBH fifth wheel. We normally supply a single 12 volt battery uh, with used RVs that we sell, but this one came in with, with two um, deep cycle 6 volt uh, RV batteries uh, that are in very good condition and it's an expensive battery setup so we've, we've opted to leave these in. Um, with 6 volt batteries, uh, you actually wire your batteries a little differently. The uh, positive from the RV uh, comes to the positive of one battery, the negative from the RV comes to the negative of the other battery, and the batteries are jumped positive to negative between the two. That's hooking batteries in series to give you 12 volts out of two 6 volt batteries. There's also an optional power inverter uh, that was installed by the previous owner. That's what these uh, large cables are. Um, negative to the negative of one battery and positive to the positive of the other battery and we'll get into that in a little more detail a little bit later your power uh, or sorry this is your front uh, docking lights on the front of the uh, fifth wheel controlled from here and right here is where you'll control your automatic leveling system so it's an electric auto leveling system you turn it on and it shows you the uh, uh, status right here you can toggle through a few different settings so you can see that your battery voltage uh, is currently 13.3 uh, volts which is a charged battery uh, and uh, show just how uh, uh, how far out of level you are front to back and side to side uh, and then there's auto retracting uh, settings there and manual mode so most often what you're going to use is just the simple auto level and from the home screen if you press the auto level button the system will ground all four jacks starting with the fronts jacks operate together but one will likely contact the ground before the other so once one makes contact the other will continue to uh, extend until they've both made contact for level and it'll move each jack individually as it needs to to level the RV. And you'll see one of the last things that it does is lift up on the front jacks to take the majority of the weight off of the suspension big difference between the electric stability systems and the electric leveling systems is this system now has absorbed the majority of the weight with the leveling legs uh, so there's there's very little weight left on the leaf springs makes a big difference to stability of the RV the system tells you what it's doing the whole way along here as well um, Tells you which jack that it's moving, when it's analyzing, and when it's found success. So now the leveling system uh, is deployed uh, and uh, you're safe to open up your slide outs and uh, uh, should be good until you're ready to, to pack up camp. When you are ready to pack up camp, if you uh, just scroll down through the menu here, to auto 
retract rear, then you hit enter. That'll automatically pull up the rear jacks uh, so that you're ready to connect. And then once you've got the truck hooked up, auto retract all to pull up the front jacks as well. amp or 30 pound propane tanks uh, and an automatic switch over propane regulator uh, so one tank on one side the other tank uh, mounted over on the other side uh, and this uh, regulator you can see here shows green uh, showing that there is uh, propane flowing uh, from the uh, from the bottle uh, what we recommend is having both bottles open bottles on both sides open uh, and the regulator pointing to one bottle or the other and uh, then the regulator will deplete uh, the supply bottle first and then automatically switch over and pull from the reserve bottle. Um, you also have a little cheat sheet uh, for your uh, automatic leveling system here, a little instruction manual. Here in the pass-through storage compartment, uh, this is where you'll find your 50 amp uh, power cord. Uh, so some sites that you visit will have the uh, 50 amp power. For those that don't, we supply the 30 amp adapter. And for those that don't have 30 amp, we supply the 15 amp park adapter. So you should be able to plug into uh, whatever service you have available at the campground. Right inside here, you'll find your power inverter. Uh, there's an on-off switch on the back of this power inverter that you can turn on, but there's also a remote switch from inside the RV. So you'll most likely uh, activate that using the remote switch. The other uh, item that you'll find in there is your control panel for your Jensen uh, touchpad. So uh, the thing that is important to uh, uh, point out on this touch or on this uh, control panel is there's manual overrides for all of your slide outs and awning and leveling system up at the top where the red and blue lights are. Uh, you can turn those dials and use those rocker switches to manually override all of the electronics to bring in slides, awning, and leveling system. Right here is your water center. So this is where you will access your dump valves for dumping your holding tanks. Uh, whenever you're dumping your holding tanks, always uh, dump the black first, and then once that's finished dumping, close that valve and dump the gray. That'll use the gray water to kind of flush out the contents of that sewer hose. Um, you've also got a black tank flush here, um, so you can uh, hook up to uh, hook up a garden hose to your black tank flush while your black valve is open to spray out the inside lining of that tank and just clean off the monitor probes to keep the monitor panel reading accurately. This is also where you'll find your battery disconnect. So when you're putting the RV into storage, uh, you can disconnect that battery to, to uh, kill all power to the RV. This RV has a solar charging system on it and it's important to point out that if you disconnect the battery, you're also disconnecting the solar charging system so that the batteries will not charge. Uh, best to leave that uh, leave that on uh, when the RV is in storage so that the solar panels can do their thing. Right here is your hot water tank. It's a gas electric suburban hot water tank. Um, so if you're going to run this tank on electricity, uh, there's a little rocker switch in the bottom uh, corner of the tank. You'll have to turn that to the on position. I'll leave it off for now. Two black reset buttons here. If you ever overheat the tank, uh, it'll go into lockout and you'll have to reset these before you can start the uh, tank up again. And this is also where you'll drain the water from the, uh, from the hot water tank by pulling out the plug at the bottom. Uh, it's a one and one sixteenth inch socket and it's got a rod on the end of it about that long. That's your sacrificial anode rod. The rod corrodes over time to help preserve the inside lining of the tank. So it does need to be replaced periodically, uh, depending on the water quality, typically uh, every three to five years. Make sure you, before you pull that out that you use the pressure relief valve to bleed pressure from the tank uh, because the tank's under pressure uh, under normal operation. Right here 
here's where you'll fill your fresh water tank. Um, so you can fill your uh, fresh water uh, tank right here with a, uh, with a garden hose or one of those white uh, drinking water specific garden hoses. And you can hook up to uh, city water if you're at a fully serviced site. If you are hooking up to city water, we recommend using a water pressure regulator. Just a little brass fitting about that size that goes on the end of the hose to maintain proper operating pressure in the water system. Um, right down here is where you'll uh, uh, hook up your sewer hose. Sewer hose is stored in the rear bumper right now. Uh, so you hook your sewer hose up to here, other end into the ground. Your black valve and gray valve inside the uh, uh, docking station. And then you have a separate gray valve here um, for your, uh, your other gray water holding tank. So make sure that you, uh, you remember to get both of these uh, gray valves. Your fresh water drain to drain your fresh tank is located right here. So just open this valve to drain the water from the tank. Here at your running gear, your tires are inflated to 65 PSI and we do recommend running them right at 65 PSI. Also recommend retorquing your wheel nuts periodically. They're torqued to 100 foot pounds now and repacking your wheel bearings. And if you pop this center cap off here, uh, you'll find a grease zerk. You can grease your inner and outer wheel bearings with the grease gun. Uh, that does not eliminate the need to ever repack your wheel bearings. It just prolongs it. Uh, so instead of repacking wheel bearings every year, uh, as long as you're giving them some grease periodically, maybe you repack the wheel bearings every three or four years. Here at the uh, back is uh, where you'll hook up that 50 amp power cord and then you have a second uh, dump here for the uh, rear black holding tank. Uh, so this is for the uh, second bathroom holding tank uh, and then you have a second black tank flush here as well. Uh, so three of your tanks drain from the front uh, hose connection and your second black tank uh, drains from the back. Around the back is where your spare tire is mounted. Important to note that the trailer doesn't come with a jack or a wheel wrench, so not a bad idea to have a wheel wrench with you that you know fits the uh, lug nuts on the trailer. Which is Access for your Jensen uh, uh, override system and your second 30 pound propane tank. Follow me inside the trailer. We'll go through a few more things. So, here at the uh, entry door is where you'll find your touchpad control. Um, so as soon as you wake that up, you can see uh, you've got monitor panels here for all of your tanks. They're all reading empty right now. You've also got some simple uh, off on switches for your water pump, water heater, interior lights, exterior lighting, and security lights up at the front. Everything else requires uh, entering the access code which is zero 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 you can um, using the menu function you can set your own access code but until you do that the default code is four zeros um, and from here you can uh, uh, do a, control most of the mechanical systems of the rv uh, so you can raise and lower the hitch you can raise and lower the rear legs. Uh, you can control the awning light. Uh, we've got the master lights on right now, so all four lighting groups turned on. 
uh, and you can also operate your slides. We've already extended two of the slides, uh, but we'll just uh, extend the third here by pressing and holding the out button. It's an electric cable driven slide, so it just runs straight in and straight out. Extends just over three feet. You just hold your finger on the button or on the touch pad until that slide is all the way extended. Once you hear that motor start to labor a little bit, you know the slide is all the way up. So. This is also where you'll control your awning from. Um, same as the slide, just press and hold in or out until the awning is fully extended or retracted. Um, to shut off the touchpad, uh, you can just hit the power button and that will uh, shut off the display. Another thing uh, right inside the entry door here is the remote switch for your inverter. Uh, so when you turn that inverter on, the light uh, comes on right away but the inverter is not actually active uh, until it kicks in. There's a transfer switch that has to kick in. You'll know when that inverter uh, becomes active because the display will light up on your microwave. Right next to the microwave is your solar uh, readout and charge control. So you can see that your uh, batteries are at 12.8 uh, volts right now and our inverter has just kicked in and we know because our uh, microwave is now uh, reading and now we'll be able to use our power outlets, our entertainment system um, and a selection of other uh, 110 volt items. Uh, for now I'll shut that inverter off. When you're not using the inverter best to leave it in the off position as it is a constant uh, power draw on your batteries. Um, here at your stovetop, it's a three burner propane stovetop. So if you just turn the burners over to the light function and use the Pico igniter to light all three of the burners. Recommend every time you change a propane bottle or have your propane system disconnected, come in here to the stovetop and just light these three burners. Uh, once you've got these burners lit, it means you've bled whatever air was in the system off of the propane system and your automatic appliances, your fridge, furnace, and hot water tank will have no problem firing up. The only pilot light that you have in the whole trailer is for the oven. Uh, so to light the pilot, turn the knob over to pilot, push in and hold on that knob, and you'll light your pilot right here, if you can see it in the video, at the pilot assembly. Once you've got a flame there, continue to hold in the knob for 10 or 15 seconds for the flame sensor to warm up, and then you can turn the oven up to temperature. Once you're finished using it, you can turn it down to pilot and leave the pilot burning, or you can turn it all the way off and just relight the pilot next time you need to use the oven. Beneath that is your propane uh, carbon monoxide detector. Uh, so this will alert you to a uh, potential uh, propane leak. And sorry, this is not a combination. This is just a propane leak detector. It will alert you to a possible propane leak or to a possible uh, low voltage situation with your RV batteries. If your RV batteries are very low, uh, this is wired into the trailer's 12 volt power system and will uh, give you a low voltage alarm. Right next to that is your power converter. This is the electrical center for the entire trailer. So you can see that all of your, um, all of your uh, 110 volt uh, circuits are protected by breakers and all of your 12 volt circuits protected by fuses. We've got all 15 amp fuses in this trailer. Uh, so not a bad idea to have some spare 15 amp fuses with you. It's not uncommon in an RV to blow a fuse. Um, one other thing with the uh, power converter, uh, depending on how that aftermarket inverter was installed, uh, you may find when you're operating your inverter, uh, you may want to uh, disengage the converter breaker. Um, uh, that just keeps the converter from trying to use the power inverter to charge the RV's batteries. Um, 
obviously the power inverter gets its power from the batteries so there's no point trying to charge the batteries with power from the batteries uh, so you may uh, want to uh, disengage that converter uh, switch um, here at the fridge it's an automatic gas electric fridge and what we recommend is uh, just leaving it in automatic most of the time uh, you can override the automatic to only run the fridge on gas. Uh, the only time you may want to do that is if you're uh, conserving electricity uh, or if you, uh, you might find that the fridge cools a little bit faster on gas than it does on electricity. Uh, now having said that, it's, it still takes hours to cool down an RV fridge, uh, so you'll want to get that uh, fridge running um, the day before you actually uh, load up uh, food into the fridge. Beneath the fridge is the furnace, and the furnace is controlled uh, from right here, the wall thermostat. Uh, this controls both the heating and cooling systems for the RV. Uh, so uh, for the cooling system, you'll need to be plugged into power for that, uh, but you can set the system to fan to run just the air conditioning fan or cool to run the air conditioning itself. There's two fan speeds, high and low, for the air conditioning fan only one fan speed for the furnace. Uh, so if you turn the uh, thermostat over to heat and uh, turn up the thermostat to where we're comfortable, the furnace fan comes on and will run for 15 or 20 seconds before the burner actually lights up. You should be able to hear that when it happens. Just like so. So now given a few minutes, we would have warm air flowing from our floor registers. When it comes up to temperature, same thing happens, only in reverse. The burner goes out immediately, but that furnace fan is still going to run for another 30 seconds to a minute just to go through its cycle. If we shut off that system. Here in the bunk room, uh, not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, second TV location here. Uh, you have a little two-piece bathroom here at the back. Uh, remember that there's a separate black holding tank for this bathroom than the one at the front. So remember you have to uh, dump both. Um, and the uh, slide out control from up at the, at the front from the touchpad. Incidentally, there is a Jensen app that you can download for that touchpad to uh, uh, control the uh, all of the functions from the touchpad can be controlled wirelessly from your smartphone by downloading the Jensen app. Uh, phone me up here to the main bathroom area. Here in the main bathroom, uh, a couple of things to cover. You've got a GFI power outlet here. Um, so just like the ones in the bathroom in your home with a test and reset button, only difference in an RV is that's wired through all of your power outlets. So if you're plugged into power and you're not getting any power from your outlets, uh, you can come in here and try the reset button. That'll reset the whole system. Um, also with your uh, RV toilet, anytime you're using your RV sewer system, you want to make sure you use a good potent RV toilet chemical. Uh, it's available in liquid, tablet, or powder form. We sell all three in our parts and accessories department. But when you add chemical to the tank, uh, put the chemical into the bowl, uh, push down halfway on the foot pedal to fill the bowl with water, and then dump the whole works down into the tank. It's important to remember that that toilet chemical takes some water to activate it. So you'll always want to add some water uh, down into the toilet with the chemical. And you'll have to add chemical to both toilets because they're separate black holding tanks. Here in the bedroom, You've got yet another TV location here. Um, power outlets on both sides of the bed. And the bed lifts up for a little storage underneath. Um, over here is that carbon monoxide detector. Um, so this detector is not wired into the RV's uh, electrical system. Uh, so you'll want to uh, check the batteries on here periodically uh, just to ensure that uh, the batteries don't go dead. 
Um, and I think for the most part that covers it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always get a hold of us here at Trailblazer. And you can also check our website, trailblazerrv.com. Thank you for watching.